message and I'm going to let him come back up and then we'll hear from the other elected officials. Thank you, Brian. Just again, want to reach out to everybody and says, look, if you're coming in town, please come look and leave and do what you have to do to secure your house in every way you can. People that also have food in the refrigerator, I ask that you put take it out, put it on the pit or give it to someone. Please do those things. There's going to be a lot of crews working. They are doing the push mode right now, so I'm asking everyone to please do not bother these guys. Let these guys do their job. They're not here to pick up any of your debris or anything. I'm asking everybody to please be safe during these times. It is hot, no water, no anything, so please just come look and leave. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. We'll next hear from Lake Charles Mayor Nick Hunter. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. I have a history degree from McNeese, and so sometimes I'll be reading books about the 19th century and wonder, I wonder what that was like without electricity, without running water, without basic uh, municipal services that we value today. And uh, we are getting a hands-on real-life experience with that right now, ladies and gentlemen. We were hit with the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in 150 years. And if that's not a sobering statement, I don't know what is. The strongest hurricane to hit in 150 years. There is a lot of teamwork going on on the ground right now. I cannot stress that enough. And sometimes we say words like teamwork and coordination, and they become a bit cliche in a disaster. But let me tell you, I have witnessed on TV others, other disasters, and I have seen the way other things have unfortunately gone in some of the aftermath in other locations. And I realize that every disaster presents its own scenario and circumstances. But right now, I don't have a bad thing to say about any local, state, or federal agency. There has been coordination. There has been communication. We are on the same page. And I believe right now everyone has each other's backs. And I am reassured. I was nervous before the storm that not enough people got out. I was nervous before the storm that not enough people heeded the call to evacuate. After the storm in the aftermath and seeing um, the, the low numbers on loss of life has kind of made me think that probably more people got out than, than we realized. You know, we don't have a clicker on the interstate with cars, but I think more people got out than, than I unfortunately thought hadn't. And I think that's part of the reason why today uh, we, we do have a low number for loss of life. I've got to talk about the staff, the city staff that's out there today, and, and every agency is up here, but I'm going to talk just for a second about City of Lake Charles employees. We had essential personnel and public safety personnel stay during this event, uh, hunkered down in some locations spread throughout the city. Those individuals are working their tails off. They are dedicated and passionate employees on any day of the week, but right now, I want the citizens of Lake Charles to know that their employees are sweating, they are toiling, they are working their tails off to pick up the pieces and get this city back together. It's been said a couple times, but I'm going to say it again. Water and electricity is out, and you should expect it to be out for weeks. Uh, when we talk about water, I want to caution people to, I want to caution and kind of qualify that statement Water exists, but in many locations in Lake Charles, when you turn on the water faucet, it is a trickle. We have six water plants. One was pulverized. Two are not working. Three are working minimally. We have a fraction of the capacity that we normally have. We've received a lot of questions about water pressure. When's it going to be back? Guys, I'm going to say it again. We just got hit with the strongest hurricane in 150 years. That takes its toll on any municipal services. Uh, I'm also going to uh, harken back to, to what Margaret Harris said with Entergy. God, can you imagine 13,000 Entergy employees? That's 10% of the greater uh, Lake Charles area. 
that are here to try and get this thing back together, but it's going to take time. And people don't need to be thinking about days right now. People need to be thinking about weeks. Um, the look and leave policy is absolutely something I am advocating. I understand. I, am a, I, I have a home, and I have a family that lives in that home. If I was away, I'd be wanting to come back and secure my property and see what happened to it. And you know what? I'm not going to fault someone for doing that. That's okay. But look, secure your property, and if I were you, I would get out of town. If I wasn't the mayor of Lake Charles right now and I didn't have to be here, I promise you I'd, be, I'd probably be with my family out of town right now. Um, so, so those are just a few things. Um, I, I've got to also stress that right now we are in the mode of just trying to clear streets. There will be a time and a place when that debris is picked up. And I'm also going to give kudos to local government who thinks about these things before, they're happen, before they happen. For instance, the contractor that, that is um, assigned with actually coming in and picking up that debris, this is by choice, not something we have to do. The parish and the city actually have the same contractor, and we have it for a reason because that same contra contractor is going to be here, and they're going to be working on city, inside the city streets, and outside the city limits at the same time. So, so that's a good thing. People should know that we think about these things before they happen. People need to be very cautious about scams right now. There's a lot of low lifes in this world that would take advantage of you on a good day, and they would take advantage of you on the worst day. And right now is a bad day for a lot of people. And there's a lot of scams going around right now. Uh, please check with the Attorney General's uh, web page and make sure that you are educating yourself. If something sounds too good to be true, it is. And there's a lot of people right now that are taking advantage of people in need. There are a lot of people in need right now. There's a lot of people in Lake Charles who found themselves yesterday without a home, without shelter. And some of them probably decided to stay for, for whatever reason. And if you are in Lake Charles right now and you're homeless, you don't have anywhere to go, maybe your basic needs are not being taken care of, if you don't have the medicine you need, the food you need, and you realize, you know what, I need to get out of town, dial 211. United Way is an amazing partner. They function as almost uh, an arm of local government when we need them in times like this. So United Way is there for us. United Way is there for you. Call 211 and they can connect you with some resources. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I uh, look outside my window, on the, I, normally on the 10th floor of City Hall, I'm on the 6th floor right now in kind of a makeshift off to, office. I'm on the phone a lot because I get pretty good reception there. Uh, and every now and then I'll just look out the window and I see the Capital One building and it looks like Swiss cheese. And it's almost like a reminder that we've been going through these motions so quickly like a freight train that sometimes even elected officials, I'll look out the window and say, my God, is this real? Is this really happening? It is real. It's happening. What, what happened to Lake Charles and southwest Louisiana has been devastating, but it is fixable. It is fixable, it is rebuildable, and we are a resilient population. We are resilient people. We have done this before. We can do it again, and you know what? We're going to do it better. So for those around the country right now that are watching this, uh, we accept your prayers. I believe in the power of prayer. I've been doing a lot of praying myself lately. I can tell you at uh, 2 a.m. a couple nights ago, I was praying pretty hard and uh, accept those prayers from the rest of the nation right now. But also there's probably a lot of people that want to help, that want to reach out and, and offer something. We have received so many calls of support, and, and I tell you, that's another thing. Out of the hundreds, probably at this point, hundreds of calls, texts, maybe even thousands, I know my voicemail is actually full right now, um, that I have received, it's been more offers for help than it has been people asking for help, and that's a pretty warm uh, feeling. Um, please reach out, again, to United Way if there is something that you feel like you can offer that doesn't have to be coordinated with government. If there's individuals around the country right now that just want to give a resource, yes, water is needed, yes, food is needed, but let me tell you, I'm going to be very blunt about this, and I'm not trying to be that guy, but I'm just going to say it. The most nimble resource is money. And rather than go to the store and buy some bottled water, rather than go to the store and buying some, some toilet paper and trying to somehow get it to Lake Charles, if you want to take that same money and donate it to United Way or the Community Foundation of Southwest Louisiana, 
Those are nimble resources because it might be water or toiletries or medicine we need today, but it might be housing. It might be um, help with uh, getting our people back uh, employed in two or three weeks. So that's the most nimble resource, and, uh, and I do believe that what you're seeing right now in Lake Charles is a bit chaotic, but it is controlled chaos. There are a lot of boots on the ground, and I feel like we are handling this in the best way humanly possible right now. Thank you, and I'll, I'll open it up for any questions. I'm not sure if this question is for you or if these representatives will be speaking at all, but as far as FEMA or Red Cross are involved, can you speak to that? I really can't. Uh, I know that there's been a lot of communication with our federal counterparts. Uh, I would encourage you to um, communicate with United Way. They have a, a direct relationship with the Red Cross. Uh, but as far as FEMA, uh, I, I have not heard of individual assistance being offered yet. I can tell you this. We have done everything that we're supposed to do locally to have people eligible for that. At this point, it is above our heads whether that happens. I can tell you that we will fight and claw for every dollar that we can get our local citizens. But there's not anything more that could be done right now in Calcasieu Parish or Lake Charles to make people eligible for federal assistance than we have already done. Is that stuck at the state level, or are we waiting on the federal approval? I, really, I don't know the answer to that right now at this point. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we'll next hear from Town of Vinton Mayor Kenny Stinson. Um, the, we got hit hard in Rita, of course, in 05, but uh, the western part of our parish got hit probably the worst. And we appreciate all the efforts. Uh, Kenny's been, uh, he's done a great job for, for Vinton for many years. We appreciate him being here today. Thank you, Brian. Um, a lot of repetition here. I thank Nick for his comments. I thank everyone else for their comments. But we did take a pretty hard hit in Vinton, as those that uh, were there can uh, acknowledge. It, uh, I hate to compare a lot of things, but it is a Rita-like. I think it's actually worse than Rita. Uh, in the town of Vinton, we sustained a lot of vegetative uh, damage. We also experienced a lot of homes being damaged. Uh, there's quite a few homes, I feel, that will be probably total uh, disasters, and they'll have to be demolished. Uh, the good thing is that there was no loss of life. There was no problem. I was really proud of our police department. They reached out to the residents that stayed. They got a list of those people, and as soon as it was able to get out, they went around and checked on those people, and I, I'm glad to say that. We have a lot of electric lines down. Uh, we talk about water. We talk about utilities. We sustained some serious damage to our water system and our sewer system. Uh, it's not just a matter of generators to get them up and running because we have to actually replace some items that uh, Laura blew away. And uh, we're working on that diligently. We did have uh, key personnel that stayed to ride this out. We had other employees that left, but they're slowly coming back. So we're waiting on them to get here so we can put a full effort into this. We just want you to know it's going to be a long time. We encourage, as the sheriff said earlier, for you to come in and look and leave. Uh, come in, check your house out. Uh, do any type of repairs that you think may need to be done. But uh, if you cannot sufficiently take care of yourself, be self-sufficient, we really urge you not to stay because I'm telling you all, it's hot. It's, uh, this fat boy sweats a lot, and I've been sweating a bunch. I just want you to know. Uh, but we welcome you to come back and look, but you need to know that you're on your own when you come back. If you're somewhere and it's cool and you're enjoying yourself and you're having a shower, stay where you are and enjoy it. Uh, other than that, I would like to let you know that uh, we, our phones at City Hall are down. We're over the Internet. The Internet's down. Uh, we have no phone service. Uh, the police department does. So if you need to reach somebody, just call the police department, and they can route the uh, uh, calls accordingly. I uh, appreciate uh, Nick's comments about 211 and United Way. That's a great resource. If you find yourself... Uh, at a point where you just don't think you can take it, call 211 and they'll make a way for you to be able to uh, find a place to stay that's, uh, that's good. Mainly just your s safety. 
Uh, we talked about the deaths from generators, so please, 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 safety first. Generators need to be outside because we do not, we, we've gone through this whole storm and no storm related deaths, so here we are after the storm and we're having deaths. That, that, uh, that, that's not sufficient. But anyway, we will continue to do everything we can uh, for our citizens in Benton. Just know that we're working hard to get those utilities back on in an expedient amount of time, but it's going to be a while. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. We'll next hear from Mayor Riley Smith of the city of Quincy. Thank you, Brian. Um, the last several days have been indescribable what we have had to go through. Uh, a lot of us have went through Rita and received a lot of damage, but this uh, Hurricane Laura has uh, caused significant damage a lot more than that. Uh, that being said, I, I do support what uh, Sheriff Mancuso and the other mayors have decided is a look and leave. Come and look at your property, make sure it's okay, but after that, you need to leave. We do not, our city does not have the resources, uh, the gas is, uh, the as far as gas, uh, food, things like that, we don't have any resources there. You, if you decide you want to stay, we recommend that you uh, have at least uh, 30 days. If you can stay for 30 days and you feel comfortable, then uh, stay. But please do not call our city for any resources there. If you do need help, uh, please call 211. They will be able to help you. And I do also want to thank our city, uh, our police chief Whitehead, uh, our uh, fire chief Copeland, and the rest of the staff, the department heads, they have done a fine job of trying to help make our, safe, uh, our city safe. I will tell you this, that um, a lot of, I know our chief Copeland and a couple of other people have lost their homes. They have nothing to go to. Instead of them looking around uh, trying to find shelter, they're here helping our community, and that says volumes about the kind of people that we have in place as helping our city. Thank y'all. Any questions? Okay, next we'll hear from Mayor Paul Hess of the town of Iowa. Hi, I'm Paul Hess. First, I want to say you don't normally hear from me because all the leaders of the parish, OEP, the other mayors, they speak more eloquently than I ever can. And what they say, I support 100 percent. And I also thank them for the support that they're giving me. I'm up here today for one specific purpose, and that's to let the town of people, uh, let the, the people, the citizens of the town of Iowa know what's going on in the town. The uh, our employees, our police department, our fire department, our public works, weathered the, form, weathered the storm, and they're there now trying to get our city back up. We're going to come back, and we're going to come back better, but it's not going to be something that's happening overnight. You know, right now, most of our streets have trees, have power lines down. You cannot really get around to a good portion of our town right now. We're trying to clean them up. So if you come back, be aware, you may not be able to get up to your house specifically. You may have to walk a distance. You know, we're trying to improve that. We have opened up some streets in the town to get through, but this is an ongoing issue. We are working with GSU or Entergy to try to uh, make sure some of the lines are dead so that we can remove trees so that you can come back and look. And like they said, if you're coming back, make sure you're self-sufficient because we are trying to look after your property and your life there in the town. We don't have time to be able to assist people that, you know, just happen to come in and that maybe are, are in an accident. You know, we will help them, but that is taking away the time and the efforts that is needed to get our town back up. Now, just to talk about what's going on in the town, we talked about, you know, every street has at least a, a one light pole down or more across big trees. We're talking, you know, some in some cases, 24, 36, 48 inch diameter trees laying across the road. It's not something that's easily moved. In addition, we our water is our water did a uh, system did make it through the hurricane. But at the very end, something happened and it damaged the generator. 
Uh, OEP is aggressively helping us try to replace that so that we can get our water system back up. And uh, we're hoping that within a short period of time that will be back up. Of course, we will be in a boil advisory for some time after that. So we're, we're hoping that we do have some water. Electricity, uh, our infrastructure is so damaged. I, you know, I, I don't envision us having electricity for at least a week and a half or two weeks or even more. As far as communications, we're basically in the dark. Uh, we lost our police communications. They are using radios. We do not have uh, telephones. Both the telephone lines to City Hall and the police department are down. We're trying to remedy that as best we can. We don't have any internet access. Our cell phone activity, is, as Dick mentioned, is very spotty. However, we do have some ability to work with those employees that are outside on Iowa be informed on the Facebook page. And so if you put something there, we do have people that are looking at it, monitoring it. We're also trying to put it status updates as they come in. Uh, you know, we've done a bunch of, uh, I guess, health and safety checks as people are asking about people, uh, you know, asking about their relatives. And if you come back, just be aware there are a lot of difficulties. If you can put it off for even a day or two days, you know, you're assisting us in trying to be able to improve it so that you can get to your house. Uh, I would estimate that 80 percent of the homes have been damaged, some very minor, some catastrophically, but almost every home and business in the town has been hit. Our beautiful town with all the trees, you, you know, you're just not going to recognize it. We'll probably have enough firewood to, to uh, supply the town, uh, the city of New Orleans for a year, the way it's looking right now. So uh, once again, you are welcome to come back. We do have a curfew. We are going to enforce it aggressively because we want to protect your property and protect what's there from those that would want to come and do harm or take, uh, you know, take what's not theirs. And other than that, we, we look forward to the time that we can all get back and uh, hopefully be back up to where we ought to have been. Thank you, Mayor. Give an example. We've had, you think of the Mayor of Venton on the west, Mayor of Iowa on the east. Our parish is 43 miles across, and that storm affected every square inch, basically. It's, it was big. Um, Mike Danahay, Mayor Sulphur, was unable to be here today. He's in the middle of something really critical. We all are, but he sends his regrets, and we understand know that the residents of Sulphur are greatly served with all of their responders, and I know he will be in future public briefings. That concludes our briefing for today. We will have our next one tomorrow, Saturday, August 29th at 4 p.m., uh, tentatively, uh, but right now at 4 p.m., and uh, unless there are any other general questions, okay? Just to double check on the curfew times, still 7 to 6? I believe so. Um, Yes, thank you. Answers yes. Curfew times are the same. I didn't want to get that wrong. I've learned don't guess on those things. Any? Do you have anything to say as far as Red Cross or FEMA is concerned? Do you know where that approval status may be? No, it's it's still early. Dick Grimion, our OEP director, deals with uh, FEMA on a lot of public assistance. What you're asking about and FEMA lingo is called individual assistance and they handle those things directly we may provide some sites but uh as the mayor uh, mayor hunter said that that is strictly in their hands and it's to just be direct i'm not going to speak for fema but it's just too early in the process it will whatever is fema decides will be communicated but we really don't know if if, if and when that may happen but once we learn that we'll certainly pass that on and how people can get in touch with it Thank you for your attention. Uh, more to come tomorrow. That was the.